Now, do you ever pick up stuff and then ask yourself the question, why did I do that? What was I, what was I thinking? This is a creepy Italian doll. Look at the amount of stuff on there. Hello and welcome. <laughs> and welcome back to my shed on a very cold and dark wintry evening. Recently, I made a video um, all about accountability, keeping myself accountable for following through on what I say I'm going to do. And I picked 10 things off the shelves that had been sat there for too long that I was avoiding dealing with. I have an issue, I have a mental block with some stuff, just never get round to dealing with it. I picked that stuff off the shelves, showed it to you, talked about it, and then I had to come back to you and give you an update. And it really helped give me that push to deal with stuff that I just wasn't dealing with. And um, it was really helpful and made a couple of interesting videos. So we're going to do it again. And we're going to find another 10 things that I just don't want to deal with and force myself to do exactly that. Now, just before I started, I noticed something which I have squirreled away and we're going to make this thing number one. It's down here. It's that big box. Uh, so I'll grab it and I'll come back to you in a sec. It's a beast. So this I picked up, bring a bit nearer, way back in the summer. Um, I'm trying to remember what I paid. I think it was £10. It is a Vaporetto, um, like a steam cleaner. Is there a picture of, oh, and there's a big label on it. Is there a picture there? Not really, but that gives you an idea. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's one of them. So, yeah, Vaporetto Evolution. Now, I had one of these way back when, which I think was an older, earlier model. In fact, I've sold two of these. I've sold one working complete and it's hard to remember the numbers i think i've got maybe 50 pounds for that one another one i had the heating element i think had bust and i parted it out and i think i made more money parting that one out but this one i picked up and i have not even had it out of the box and it sits there tucked under the end of the table not getting dealt with i mean you can part out all of this stuff and do quite well on it oh this has been used look at that look at the filth on there anyway it needs testing getting out having a look at it cleaning it up and listing it so that is number one on this new accountability mission and we're going to go for another 10 things oh <laughs> okay i can see a box up there we went to um, an auction house not far from here, not long after we moved here and bought a few bits at auction. So I've had this box I'm going to show you for the best part of a year and not done anything with it. Uh, so let's take a look. Bear with. Right, it's not these, although I do need to get rid of those. <laughs> it's this. So I paid, um, we left a load of bids at an auction and then went back and, and found out what we'd won. We won a few bits, one of which was this. And I was surprised because I only left five pounds as a bid. And I think I was the only person that bid. But it is a huge collection of Matchbox labels, including some huge Matchbox labels. <laughs> Look at that. But most of them, if I take these top ones off, are what you would expect. So, I used to collect Matchbox labels. When I was a kid, I used to collect everything. 
postcards, stickers, you know, the usual 80s stuff, erasers, you know. Um, but yeah, me and my granddad were into this sort of stuff. Um, tea cards, cigarette cards, matchbox labels, everything. So I'm still drawn to this stuff. I don't really collect anymore, but, um, oh. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I just need to make some decisions. Whether I sell it all as, oh, look, there's the queen. Whether I sell it as one collection and just see what we can get back on it or break it down. I need to do some research. There's some nice vintage stuff in here. Well, it's all vintage. But, uh, oh, so I keep getting distracted. Look at that. Yes, that is number two. Half the battle. Now, let me know if you're the same. Half the battle with this stuff is just making the decision what you're going to do with it. Am I going to list the whole lot? If so, how am I going to do the pictures? Am I going to lay it all out and do a, just a pile of labels? Am I going to break it down into three or four smaller lots? Am I going to do a lot of the giant labels? Am I going to, you know. And then I sometimes just get stuck in my own head and I can't make a decision and it goes back on the shelf. Never to be dealt with. <laughs> so the part of the exercise that I'm doing here is just saying no we're gonna get it listed one way or the other so that box of thousands of matchbox labels is number two All right let's just make this number three before we move on these three metal lampshades i think we bought them thinking we were going to use them and um didn't three now, if I come round the end of the table here, this spot has become a bit of a dumping ground for stuff I'm not dealing with. So we're just going to grab what's down there. And yeah, deal with it. Right, so this is number four. Should be an easy one. It is a great big bag of connects and a tub that feels like it's pretty much full of ooh, connects. Yeah. Uh, they were bought separately, I believe, um, but just need dealing with again. So whether we do that as one lot or a couple of lots, who knows? But that is number four. So, bring you forward. Down here, we have more stuff. Uh, okay, we'll put some bobs there. Oh my word, yes, okay. Now, do you ever pick up stuff and then ask yourself the question, why did I do that? What was I, what was I thinking? Um, we were at a yard sale event thing again back in the summer and we went to a store, we bought some stuff and then they had this great big crate full of VHS videos. And I was sort of glancing at it and having a look and the lady said to me, Take them away if you want them, because they're going in the bin. And we had that conversation. And I thought, oh, that would be that would be a, a complete waste. OK, I'll take them away and see what I can do with them. And um, I did look them up at the time. And that is a market. These none of these are sealed. They're all, you know, used. They've got stuff off the telly. There could be some really interesting stuff on these. That's that's a whole other thing. Watching them and seeing what's on them. But, oh, who's that? Free fashion show. Anyway, um, I did look them up at the time and there is a market for VHS videos. Uh, not sealed, but as these are. But I just need to work out what I'm going to do with them. 
there are loads of them. See, I even sorted them into kind of stacks of the same brand. So we're going to call that number, what are we on? Five. Make some decisions, sort these out into lots and see if we can sell them. They don't owe me anything. The lady was so happy I took them away. <laughs> but honestly, they haven't moved from that spot since I put them there. Right. So, also down here is another crate. Now, this is something I actually enjoy dealing with. Um, it's not so much that I've been avoiding this, but I didn't get them listed. I like to list Nerf stuff either in the summer holidays or at Christmas. I miss the summer holiday window. <laughs> So it's going to be a Christmas bundle now. Um, so I need to go through all of this, see if there's anything in there that's worth kind of pulling out and doing individually. That won't be. There's some of these uh, like belts and little, you know, clothing. They sometimes are worth just pulling out and doing a separate listing. There's a target, that sort of thing. This isn't the electronic one, which is worth selling on its own. I sold one of those not long ago. But yeah, and then there's, I don't know, 10, 12 gums. Probably one bundle is worth. Ooh. Ooh. In there. So yeah, we just need to get the guns tested. With Nerf guns, you do have to spend a minute checking they work because they do jam up, they do fail, um, and the last thing you want is a is a return on a cheap Nerf gun. But I will get those tested. Probably, I would imagine, one big bundle. Get it on and get it gone. So that is where we at. Six? Six. Four more things. So let's try and clear this area down here. And here we have a crate of Lego. Hold on. Now, recently I cleared um, a great big tub of Lego. There was, was it eight or nine kilos? I can't remember, of mixed Lego. And I did a deal with somebody on the whole lot, sold it in bulk, which was great to move that. But this is vintage Lego and there's a lot of space Lego in it and I haven't done anything with it. So what I think the plan is, I'm gonna do like a collection of assorted space Lego bits and bobs, um, and just maybe even sell it on auction. There are some, I made a video, didn't I, where I went through this, I think. There are some, you can see in there, space Lego figures, whether I put those in the bundle to kind of sweeten the bundle, um, I don't know. These are the decisions I need to force myself to make. So there's that there and underneath is a tray of just, you know, bog standard old Lego. Yeah, so we will get that moving. Might just do it as a whole job lot uh, and, and let it go. Maybe maybe do it on auction. Uh, it's whether I want to split out the figures and stuff is the big question there. But we will get it sold. It needs to not be sat on the floor in the way is the point. So is that seven? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Three more things. Oh, now something that keeps annoying me because I keep kicking it is this. This is, um, now, is it a Kath Kidston or an Emma Bridgewater? I think this is a Kath Kidston design and it is an, is it Ikea? I believe it's an Ikea, yes. It's an Ikea um, blind. Now, is that what we paid? I'm not sure that is what we paid. It's got a price there, but I seem to recall it was three pounds or something. Oh, no, there, there we go. 
$3.99. Anyway, so it's a blind. Um, it's, I think it's a discontinued pattern. I think there's some good value in it, but I just haven't done anything with it. Hopefully I will be able to find some images of it online because I don't really want to get this out and try and take pictures of it. No. <laughs> anyway, that I've been avoiding for all of those reasons. Like I don't quite know how to deal with it. And then it's going to be a pain to ship as well. <laughs> anyway, eight, two more things. We're nearly there. Let's find some stuff that ne Oh, okay, okay. This box up there, I have no idea how long I've had this. This is a creepy Italian doll. Can you see it? Almost. Now, one reason, to be fair, that I have not dealt with this is I was going to make a separate video about sorting out this doll and getting it listed. But I think it just needs dealing with. She's a little bit scary. Time has come to get her cleaned up. She's got some filthy clothing on. Whether I, I put that through the wash or something, who knows. All right, it's come off the shelf. It's in this video. It will get done somehow. Susanna, Sylvie or Sheila? Which one have I got? Susanna, maybe. Um, but yeah, these are collectible. There's the brand, look, uh, Ferga. Um, when I do the follow-up, I will share with you uh, what I found out. Um, but I did look it up ages ago when I first picked it up and was quite surprised, even in this condition with, you know, just pants and a vest, has some value. So we will get her listed and hopefully sold. So we need one more thing. There's something in the corner there that I've had for ages. This was a bit of a fail. Um, because I, I bought a replacement battery for this. Let me show you what it is. It's a Dyson. I can't remember where we got it, but I ended up with it and wasn't functioning. I thought it was a battery issue. Bought a replacement, um, not an official Dyson, but a replacement battery. And it made no difference. Um, I think it kind of works, but then cuts out. There's, there's something wrong with it. I did a load of cleaning and, you know, tried to unblock it if that might have been the issue. Couldn't figure it out. Got really annoyed with it. Put it in the corner and left it. Let's see if it does anything. No. Nothing happening. Um, so, anyway, I need to make decisions. And with that in mind, I have more Dyson stuff that sits around never getting dealt with. Look, there's bits and bobs here that I've ended up with. Right, attachments, etc. We're going to make all of this. Here we are. Now, I think maybe this lot came with that. Dyson. It's a bag full of accessories. Or did this come from Carla's? No, I don't think so. I can't remember. Anyway, um, yeah, it's just full of stuff. That, that, oh, I think this did come with it. That's the wall charger, so you can, like, mount it on the wall and it charges uh yeah all sorts of gubbins see and let's say i can't get that working which i don't think i can i, I remember fiddling around with it for ages i can sell these official dyson plugs and charger mounts quite easily you just need to decide 
what we're doing with it and get it done. And that's the point. So if I can get all of this listed and dealt with and gone, look at the amount of stuff on there. That would be great. And now, as I said in that last video, everything that's come off the shelves now can't go back on the shelves until I have made decisions and got the ball rolling with getting this stuff listed and then hopefully sold. So there we go. That's my 10 things in this second accountability push to get myself listing the stuff that sits on the shelves and never gets dealt with. Thank you so much for watching. If you would like to carry on watching me, I will dig out an old video from the archives. If you want to watch me from years ago, vlogging stuff on eBay, have a look at this one up here. Take care. I'll see you soon. Bye.